Good evening, friends and family everywhere. Uh, many, many calls and inquiries have been coming in after hearing the horrific news, the horrific, horrific news of the murder of someone who, whose death didn't, uh, didn't earn him the title of Gibor. His life, his life earned him the title of Gibor. Ari lived a few minutes from our house. I just saw Merev Chavez. <clears throat> about to get ready to go to the funeral in a bit. Uh, what's weird is that um, so many people that have been posting today and that have been sharing their thoughts, memories, and prayers were all asking the same question. How would Ari have reported today? I'm not going to begin to describe anything about him because any word, any word that I would say right now would only be an injustice to this Gibor, to this hero. Pashut, pashut me'od a Gibor, just a hero. I'm looking, if you could see where I live, there's, there's a security road right beneath where, where we live. Those lights right behind us is Beit Lechem. The lights you can't see right now, but up here is another village. And many of us go to sleep every single night knowing that we have Giporim. We have heroes that don't sleep. Our shul, our community is filled with them. Ari was one of them. Ari never really slept. But I wanted to share with all of you what many of us went through this morning as we heard about what happened, not knowing who it was. But in today's day and age where you could watch footage, you could watch immediate footage of terrorist atta terror attacks so footage came in and everyone that lives here that saw that footage of this hero getting stabbed in the back by scum of the universe and then responding the way he did and the body mannerisms and all that everyone knew what they wished they didn't know that was ari it wasn't such a shock after the footage came in, that that's who it was. But it's a tremendously, tremendously difficult thing to hear of someone going through pain, someone you admire, even someone you don't admire, but specifically someone who you admire and someone who cried daily over the pain of Am Yisrael to know that that person is the person that you saw in the footage. Kind of explains why there's been a deafening silence here all day. Today's sunset, it was hard to put into words. It was almost as if the sun was going down. An absolute, absolute silence here. Besides, tears. My wife went to the Makolet. About an hour ago, she said there was no talking in the Makolet. Just people walking around crying. It's the local mini market that we have. Right in our neighborhood, there's only one little mini market here. Ari lived basically came out across the street from there. On a personal note, um, our families, my family and Ari's family, go back uh, probably around 40 years, maybe a bit more. Our fathers, our soul brothers, best friends, his father, Rabbi Yonafold, he should be consoled and given 
infinite kohot, infinite strength. His father was the principal at a school that my father had the privilege of teaching at for many years in Riverdale, New York, SAR. This goes back to the late 70s, early 80s. The folds are like Ramesh Bacha for many, many years. His brother Hillel, Eitan, Dani, this is all, this is all Mishpacha to us. But what's amazing is that here in Efrat, everyone, feel, everyone is feeling that they lost their Gibor. Everyone here is feeling that they lost the person that they knew would have their back in a second. We have other Giborim like that here as well. I live around them. It's a very humbling thing. And it puts, obviously, the obvious into perspective. And it's taken us to Mitzvah, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. It's taken everything and given it, I don't see a new meaning, but a meaning. But today's sunset is what really freaked me out. Something really, really freaky happened. First of all, Bichlal, today in Efrat, our whole neighborhood, which is the neighborhood that Ari, I can't believe I'm going to say the word lived in. He's alone, Mr. There. It doesn't really add up at all. You have to understand this. this we talk about someone who was chai. He was chai. He was mamash, mamash chai. He really, really lived. And therefore, and therefore, what happened was is that Ari, <sighs> to his last second, to his absolute last second, was Pashut alive. But when that life is physically taken from the world, it's just crazy what happens all over the place. Michlal on just like a spooky level. The electricity has been out all day long, in and out, in and out. Everything feels so weird, so weird, so bizarre. But when the sun was setting today, it was mighty bright. It was mighty bright. Bright red. And it reminded me of a, of a story that I try, I try to hope I pray that when I say it, it's like we'll be saying it as if it once happened. But these are stories that don't happen anymore. One time, the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, was walking with his father, the Rebbe Rashab. And they were walking during sunset, and the sun was mighty bright red. And his father asked the son, the Rebbe Rashab, asked the Friedrich Rebbe, he said to him, why is the sun red when it sets? Why is it red when it sets? So the son, little Yosef Yitzchak, didn't know. So his father said to him, the sun is red when it sets because it's full of shame. It gets embarrassed that another day passed and the light that it provided wasn't enough to bring the great day in the world. It sets with Busha every day that passes without Mashiach coming. Am Yisrael has known blows. We've known blows. We, we don't really know what it's like to not know blows. Sometimes the break between the time of the blows is a bit more extended. Maybe what we've been feeling a little bit now. But we know of many, many red suns. Suns filled with the redness of shame that it's late that it came and provided into the world. Lo ayama speak. It wasn't enough to bring Mashiach. So I'm, I'm going to say something that I uh, just feel. Tomorrow's sun, the light of tomorrow has got to bring Mashiach. What else is going to bring a consolation to his wife, to his widow, and his four orphans? And of course, 
all of our hachanot over here for Yom Kippurim, for Yom Kippur, all of our, our hachanot and the davening and the benadam lechaviro, every aspect of it, of course, is different. It's going to be elevated to the highest extreme. But the soul of, of the, the neshama of our neighborhood, as strong as we are, it's okay to admit that it's also ripped to shreds. Ripped to shreds. <sighs> From here, we're sending to everyone a tremendous request to open your arms a bit wider. To voice your truth a bit stronger. Like the legacy of our Gibor that we're talking about. To voice your truth just a bit stronger. To be a little bit less concerned with the Avodah Zara of this generation, which means to be politically correct. Which is an Avodah Zara that Ari completely abolished in his own Dalil Amut, in his life. May the Ribbon Shalom see what we're experiencing on the deepest level, which is that certain nisyonot in life, certain tests in life, like the Ish Kodesh says. We might be able to get through them, but not with wounds, with scars. What kind of a scar, what kind of a scar came onto your people today? And until Mashiach comes, until that sun comes and shines its light bright enough for the Mashiach to come, this scar is a heavy one. One of the heaviest we've experienced here, without a doubt. At this point, I would also like everyone, whoever is watching, whoever knew or didn't know, to I see that in one of the comments here, the GoFundMe campaign has been presented. The GoFundMe campaign for Ari's wife and children is for children. Whatever we can right now, on whatever level, Uchuva Utfila Gzdaka Mahavir in Israel Gzera. There was a Gzera. We will never understand. Never. We're still here. We're still alive. So whoever can help with the GoFundMe campaign for this family, Ashrechem, Tavo Lechem Abracha. And also an important thing, everyone mourns differently. Everyone expresses things differently. Everyone experiences pain, sorrow, and loss in a different manner. We should all be able to just give space to however people are experiencing this scar, this wound, because this is a, this is not a wound, this is mamasha scar. We physically lost someone who would have taken a bullet and probably did for so many of us, every given second. Today, something really did change in Am Yisrael. And when that kind of impact comes down, people are going to experience it in different ways. People might shut off. People might wake up. People might go into a coma, into a, a spiritual coma. Everyone's going to experience this differently because the magnitude of the loss of such a neshama, we're talking, this is big leagues. This is big leagues. Those, those of us that are privileged to know the family, know the folds, the, fold, the folds have produced some of the most incredibly beautiful, passionate, passionate 
יהודים אל עם ישראל. So like I opened up in the beginning, I'm, I'm not going to share more about his ma'alot, not his ma'alot, his, his, who he was, because I'm not going to pretend that I even have an, an inkling of what it means to have Mesirut Nefesh, like he did on a daily basis. There are plenty of posts that are describing that, but I just felt it right right now. There's been so many inquiries, so many calls and emails and texts from all over the world, from people that knew Ari, Shami Komdama, and people that didn't. So just to put, put the love and the heartbreak that's out there, and for all of us together, that when the sun comes up tomorrow morning, Bizrat Hashem, it will be, even though right now, it doesn't really feel like it will. But when the sun will come up tomorrow morning, and we see the sun that came out into the world, that tonight when this family comes home and sits Shiva, that the Shiva won't be over Erev Yom Kippur, when usually a Yom Kippur would end the Shiva period, but that the Shiva will be done with the light that will come tomorrow morning. And that when it sets tomorrow, when the sun sets tomorrow, setting into the ninth of Av, the sun won't be red. The sun won't have any shame. The sun won't have any shame. Because its light will be bright enough to heal all broken souls. And to bring Rafua to bring healing to all the, those that need Rafuat HaNefesh, Rafuat HaGuf. So those of you that are in Chutz Laretz, I just want to give you a second of Eretz Yisrael, the land, the holy land. That has already experienced being drenched with so much of its people's blood. Whatever.